This is Joey and today I'm going to be going over how I color in and vectorize my line artwork that I do. So first I draw something <laughs> and I do it usually with a pen or thick black lines and then I scan it in using my Epson, Epson scan uh, software here. And the I did this on white paper uh, this one in particular with a Sharpie. Uh, my scan settings here I have set for uh, document type reflective. You can also, let's see here, on the source scanner glass, um, you can do an auto exposure photo or document. Photo means I believe it's going to try to capture as much color as it can. Document it's mainly looking for black and white. Um, from there I like to use 300 dpi since most of this ends up on the web. And I'm not doing any too large printing projects usually. So I'll go ahead and scan this in. And just the defaults, like where you want it to go and name it, will be here. Usually this stuff just ends up on my desktop. So it's going to take a minute to scan it. From here, I will open it, make sure everything looks good. So you can see um, it's a dirty page. This is the main image here. Uh, a quick thing I like to do is go ahead and select the area I want just in preview. And you can use uh, Command K. And this will go ahead and crop the image. Um, I go ahead and just do that. And then that way it's the main area that I want. I'm going to go to Open With GIMP and clean this up a little bit. I don't like to use the threshold option. I use a, a quicker way, if it, especially if it's thick um, black lines like this. What I'll do is open the image in GIMP and go to Image, and then there's a mode on here, and it's called Indexed. Indexed, and then on this option here, you'll see Use Black and White 1-Bit Palette. And this go, goes ahead and makes your image just black and white uh, there's no grays or anything in between. It's strictly black or strictly white. Once you've done that, you'll need to go to image again and go to mode and go to RGB. Uh, from here, this will do just fine as far as something we can take into Inkscape and get vectorized. Um, on this, I want to make sure for when we color it, we need to make sure all our areas are closed off. Uh, this one's pretty intricate, intricate, um, but you'll see what I mean. Like if there was a gap anywhere where color could bleed out where you don't want it to. So it looks pretty pixelated and junky right now, which is why I want to take it into Inkscape because we can vectorize it and it smooths the line work out significantly. So from here, we're going to go to File and go to Export As, and this is usually just the default. Um, and I just take it to my desktop and do export. I'm going to name it something different. Go to export. Since we have the cleaned up version now, I don't really worry about too much on the compression stuff or all the export settings. Uh, then we're going to do Inkscape. get that opened here. Okay, and then I'm going to go to Document Properties in Inkscape. And I'm going to set this up to be 1080 pixels by 1080. Um, just for our, our boundaries, I guess. Um, or the size of the the page that we're working with. Um, and you'll want to go to units and go to pixels and do 1080 by 1080. Um, once that's set, you'll have a nice square here. Then from here, we're going to bring in, we're going to import, go to file, go to import, and go to that image that we exported from GIMP, the cleaned up version. And you'll open that. And we can zoom in by pushing control and then you can scroll with your mouse. Uh, so right now we can see this is the actual imp, um, exported image from GIMP and you can see how pixelated it gets when you zoomed in like that. 
So what we can do is select the image here and go to path and then we're going to do trace bitmap. And I'm just doing this on the default settings. Um, you can push OK and then you can X out of this. And what's going on is a vector version of this image or the line work in it has been placed on top of the imported image. So you can actually click on it and scoot it over and then you can see the difference when we zoom in using control and the mouse scroller how this one is staying nice and clean and this one's getting more pixelated. So now you can click on the imported image and I just delete that and then we're gonna get this to where it's colored in. Um, you'll wanna just have this to the side here and then let's go to our make a square option and then go ahead and make a square next to your image or your vectorized line work and it'll whatever color you had last selected will be that color but you can go to the pointer and then select it and then let's say we want this I I want this to let's say we just want a weird pink color for the majority of the eye so what we'll do is take this select that or select your line work and bring it to the top so on your raise selection to top you're gonna have that there so it hovers over the pink square and then from here you, know, you want to change both of these objects to a path so you can select this one and then push shift and select your pink square and then go to path and go to object to path then the next thing we'll do and then de uh, deselect it by just pushing somewhere clicking somewhere off and then let's go back to that line work and then push control D and that's going to duplicate it so we've made another layer on top of the previous line work and then we're going to push shift and then click on the square behind it and go to path difference and then we'll do path break apart and you'll see it kind of shows you all the, all these things imagine like a um, a cookie cutter is pretty much what just happened so um, you had this line work press through the image and kind of cut out what you want so here's what happens if you accidentally move the the pink square you'll see um, nothing right now but if you selected the outer border and push delete you can have leftover pink in there and then we have some other areas where we want it to be clear that we can clean up now so we'll go in here and select what you want to be clear and it takes a minute I mean there's different methods to this, this is a pretty <laughs> intricate one to use um, but it kind of gives you an idea for a different effect what we're going for so what I'm doing is I'm zooming in by holding control and scrolling in and finding these areas that I want to be clear or see-through and doing that so there's <laughs> I don't know why I picked this image but <laughs> maybe that's good so there's a couple of areas in here I want and I'm just pushing delete I'm selecting and deleting them let's see I know I want that to be clear and sometimes with it you have to scroll in so it knows what you're trying to do or trying to select I don't want to spend too much time on this cleaning it up but some major areas like that just selecting that deleting it Okay, I'll just do that now just to show you guys and then let's say we want these eyes to be um, you know instead of them being pink as well I want them to be white 
which will just actually let's make them like, like a weird yellow just to be weird. Actually, we'll just do white. <laughs> okay, so they're going to be white. I'm going to select that. So again, kind of like how we were selecting deleting before, you'll select the area you want and then make it white, make it the color on the color picker down here. And yeah, I totally could have picked a less intricate <laughs> image, but hey, this is uh, the kind of stuff I do, so. And then there's the master one down here. We can make that white. And then um, let's say like this is a lot to go through, like the this main um, iris here to, to go and try to change all that. And what I'll do is use the pencil tool and there's something we need to check here. When we use the pencil tool, you want to make sure that you have the fill selected. Make sure your stroke is turned off. So you'll use that X here. Um, and then what we'll do, and I'm just using a mouse. There's no tablet or, or pen, or digital pen needed, but we can take this and just start going around the area like so. And then it fills it in white. Um, and we can send this, we can go to the arrow here. And what we'll do is we'll send this to the very bottom by using lower selection to bottom. And then we're going to raise it up a step. And if you don't see anything, raise it up another step. And then keep raising it up until it is behind the line work that we just did. Or just bring it all the way to the top again. So that wasn't working. There we go. Brought it down a step. So just mess around with that. And let's say we want it to be a green color. And then the same idea we want with these two dots here. I want those to be white. I'm going to go back to the pencil tool and go around the area we want to use. Make that white. You could, I could leave it like that, or I could, I'm going to actually move it down where I wanted it. And then we're going to do this other guy. And I'm going to push control and scroll out to get an idea here. And yeah, so this is all colored in. If I want to move this around, I'll select everything and group it by using this icon up here. We'll do group and then we can use another square. First I'm going to move it out of the way. And we'll use another square to kind of give a background to this. And Let's say we want it to be yellow just to make it pop. We'll bring that on here. Uh, if you have it selected, bring it to the top using ray selection to top. We have it here. I'm going to use um, control and shift to scale this from, from the center. Uh, if you hold just control, it'll scale it uh, from corner to corner without messing up the proportions. If you use shift, it, it centers it. Um, and then we can just put this here and ta-da! So we have a colored in line art vector and Inkscape, and then using GIMP to kind of do some touch-ups. You may not always have to go through GIMP because the trace to bitmap feature is pretty darn good on Inkscape if you're just doing cartoony stuff like this with um, with line art. Um, even if you have like other colors or faint lines, um, it's pretty accurate, but I still like to process it through GIMP just to make sure um, areas are closed off, and that way I have a chance to kind of edit as needed. This image was pretty much good to go from there. Uh, but yeah, I uh, hope this was helpful. I know it's not really the easiest thing to color in line art in Inkscape because it's mainly want you to do shapes and things like that. Uh, the bucket tool is okay, but I've had problems with it where it doesn't completely fill on the sides with the image. So this has been the best method I've had is, is taking the line art, putting it on top of 
um, like a square that has a color on it and then using um, you'll go to path you select both of them and do difference and then while you still have that selected you do break apart and then you can um, delete the outer area and then and then color it in from there and select what colors you want so yeah, from there, uh, this has been Joey. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I will get to you. Thanks.